good morning monday and it's cold and windy and i want it to be sunny i like my hair today um you're gonna think shut up about your hair but i just like put some product in it last night i did like a treatment like a mask and then put some olaplex in it and some mousse and then just rough blow dried it and slept on it and it's kind of a nice change because my hair's wavy i can make it go curlier or i can just make it look relaxed like this so it's kind of a nice reminder i don't have to do the whole shebang i have a few pr packages that have been sitting here that i wanted to show you because i didn't get around to it last week um and they're so lovely like i haven't been getting as many pr packages because i've been more selective which is really positive because then when i do get them i'm like very excited for the brand and the products um and i'm not get, i'm no longer getting like things that i'm like wait did i agree to this i don't remember agreeing to this so um first is from hourglass i when i had that in, that in my inbox i was like oh my gosh this is the dream getting sent pr from hourglass because this is just one of those brands that i just always aspire towards whenever i go to like space nk or whatever i'm just like oh their stuff is so beautiful so we've got their hydrating skin tint gorgeous packaging and fingers crossed this shade is my shade oh i'm so excited for this packaging look at it just beautiful oh my gosh i love this it's like um a square little lid so this is their hydrating skin tint i got it in the the palest shade because it's a skin tint i don't think they had like i can't remember anyway but Fingers crossed this is good and I love a skin tint because I don't like to wear too much makeup so I'll report back on this one. Next we've got an airbrush concealer. I'm always open to a different kind of concealer. Oops. Every time. Oh my gosh, their packaging. Do you know what is nice about their packaging? And I know that they would have thought of this. It's the feel, the touch. So when you're holding it, it feels really really lovely like this is like a really soft plastic um part and then this top part it feels very satisfying this again i went for the palest this is very pale that might be too pale for me which is not something i usually would say but sometimes with the under eyes you don't want to go too pale because it can actually make you look more we'll see I'm, i don't know i haven't put it, put it on my face yet so it should be it may, maybe it could be my brightening concealer because i have another one that's maybe a bit more yellowy toned they sent me a beautiful brush, which I'm very excited to give a whirl. Volumizing Glossy Balm in Impulse. It says Phantom Glossy Balm. <gasps> Let's open this together. Look at this. Is it a push? Ah, is that way? Look at that. How oh, such well this is right up my street i haven't got any makeup on but you all know how much i just like kind of or tinted oils or tinted balms like i love the typology ones that feels delicious and then we have got another glossy balm oh in a different color so that's a red color which i really do like because it suits my skin tone a nice red will bring out the colours, but this is a lovely, just pinky, neutral, gorgeous, very excited to try those. So thank you Hourglass for sending that and Monty. And if you didn't know, Hourglass are cruelty free and vegan, so that's why we love Hourglass. <laughs> and next is a very cool thing, Fern. They are a perfume brand. They have sent me their new perfume, their spring perfume. So it's called Spring 24. It's so cool, it comes with this little description. It says, the fern artist is Anna Higgy. It has a description of the scent. So it's got Buchu leaf, Cape, and it tells you where it's from. Buchu leaf from the Cape Peninsula in South Africa, ginger root, grapefruit, pepper, green mandarin, bitter orange, bergamot, neroli, jasmine, narcissus flower, red cedar, vertiver, root. I mean, how beautiful does that description sound? And I just wanted to take a moment for the packaging. Number one, it came in this tiny little box, so you're not having to 
unpackage a large cardboard box. Obviously they care a lot about sustainability and it's an organic perfume, which obviously is quite rare. Don't know that it's something I've seen or come across before. And I know that lots of people who are into organic skincare and body care are mindful of perfumes and mindful of scent. So if you are mindful of that and looking for something different but you like to wear perfume, this could be an option for you so you know that it's organic and um, yeah, good for you, good for the environment. And look at this packaging, obviously all recyclable, beautiful. I'm assuming this looks like it's a recycled something. Maybe I can find out more information about that. Also these kinds of boxes, I really appreciate boxes like this too because you can take that out and reuse this as a box because it's well made rather than just a cardboard box. So here it is. I just think this is just so innovative and cool. So spring 24, 20% concentration. That's so cool. I actually have never seen that as well on a perfume where they give you everything that's in there so you can actually learn what you enjoy because a lot of the time I, I use perfume I'm like, well, I don't really know what I like. So let's give this a whirl. Oh, you can really smell the grapefruit. That is so delicious. That's so refreshing, so perfect for this time of year when you're just getting excited for the warmer months. And it's got a depth to it as well. That is beautiful. I love the like, it's definitely, it's like got that bitter smell and then it's got the citrusy smell. It's just beautiful. So thank you to Fern for sending me this. I might have a link or a discount code with Fern. I'm trying to remember what they said to me, but I might do. This is cute. So it's got a little sampling kit. Everything is packaged so beautifully. They have gone to great efforts with this. Oh my gosh, they've sent rhubarb seeds with the delivery. Oh my gosh, okay, I knew it. So this tray in here, this is so cool. I knew that this would be significant. You fill this with compost and plant these seeds. How cute, I'm gonna do that. That is so cute. We already have a rhubarb plant, but what I could do is I could grow it and gift it to somebody. I'm gonna do that, that's so cute. How lovely is that? And then they've got a sample of another perfume. Oh no, okay, so I get it. They send you a sample of the perfume so you can use this before you, I guess, open your perfume to make sure that you like it so that you can order it online. I'm assuming that's what they're going for, which is very thoughtful and smart. And then also you have this little one that you can pop in your handbag. So thank you very much to Fern for that beautiful gift. And it's all about the perfumes because I also got a package from Jo Loves. So Jo Loves has a new fragrance with Love from Positano. And this is their limited edition perfume, which is just a beautiful perfume. Look at this, it just makes me want to go on holiday. Gorgeous, gorgeous packaging. It's gonna be difficult. I hope I can smell this because I've just opened another perfume that you get a really hefty amount. Oh my gosh, that's beautiful. That is so beautiful. I feel like this is um, definitely like a people pleasing perfume because that feels very, like you couldn't not like that. It's, it reminds me of a Chanel perfume that I used to wear when I was younger. I don't remember what it was. I think it was like, not the, Chanel number no. five, it was maybe the green one or the yellow one. It smells very different to it, but it gives me, it, like, I guess it's this citrusiness. There's something in there. It has a similar a vibe in terms of like the time of year, because this is very, it's very difficult to describe scents. They're both citrusy and grapefruity, but this one has more of like a bittery, like a more depth to it. It's a bit more edgy, I, I would say, like it's got something to it that's different. This is like a classic, just delicious on a spring summer day or on holiday, you wanna smell fresh and amazing and just, that is beautiful. Like they're both beautiful, just amazing, amazing. Oh my gosh, so this is gonna be my spring scent and then this is gonna be my summer scent, sorted. Thank you so much, Joe Loves.
So I hope you enjoy that little PR box and I don't really do those as often anymore. There was also another package I got the other day with a red lipstick and I need to find that and show you it, but I will find it in this vlog. It's Monday, it's not the nicest of weather. It hasn't been recently, so you probably noticed I've not really been doing the garden because I got into that and then the weather's just changed. So I haven't really had the opportunity, but in the next few days, we really want to finish painting the outside of the office. We got in touch with someone about the guttering and we managed to fix the door ourselves, which we're so proud of because we were going to get a carpenter in. So that's the plan when there's a bit of sun and we get outside, paint the outside, paint the windows. Thank you for your input. You all suggested to paint the windows off-white like our windows. So we did that. It was very difficult to find an off-white that wasn't like yellow or grey. Don't know why that's, that's a thing because our windows, they aren't brilliant white because I can tell because of the comparison from them to the wall. Um, they are, they're white, they're very white, especially outside they look very white, but they are, they are off-white because I've touched them up with the paint that the people who fitted them gave to us, which was brilliant white and it doesn't match, which is excellent. And I wish that they had told us what the actual paint was. So what we did, we went to Valspar and they said what they can do is they can just mix up white, which isn't brilliant white. So with brilliant white, I think they add something to it to make it brighter. So they just gave us the base white without that addition. So that should be just a very slight off white. So that's what we're gonna paint the windows in that we really fresh and then we can get our black gutters and get our fascias fixed. And then it will all look really lovely. Kind of what I wanna do over the next few days or if it's nice outside, I might get in the garden. This happens every year with me where I really get into the idea of doing the garden and growing my own vegetables. But every year that we've lived in this house, there've been so many renovation projects that it kind of clashes. And these renovation projects sometimes are time sensitive or they need to get done or they're just important. And I don't, I don't wanna feel like I'm stretching myself between two things all the time. So I end up just giving up the garden. And I think this, this year, even though I've spoken about doing the garden, I wanna do this stuff, I'm not, I'm just not gonna tell you what I'm gonna do at all because it may end up that I don't grow much veg this year and I, I just cover the veg beds or I don't get loads of things done that I wanted to because there are priorities like inside the house. And I guess when I see lots of people online, I follow lots of gardeners and I get so inspired by them. And I'm like, oh, I really want to do this. But then I, I forget that they're potentially not renovating their home um, or they're not running a business or that their situation is different. So. It is what it is and I really want to do it but also I can't do that and then not do the things that are gonna, I don't know, work that's gonna make me money or pay the bills or house stuff that's gonna make our home our home. So um, I'm no longer gonna be fighting in my own head about doing one or the other or the pressure of having to get something done and just do what I would like to do that day and that week that's important to me and the rest will follow because uh, what will end up happening is I'll end up doing the garden, but I won't, I won't be putting the pressure on myself. <laughs> and there's lots of things that you've suggested actually. Some of you have suggested to use up a few of the beds for squashes or pumpkins because they take up a lot of space. So we can do things like that. But yeah, uh, that's, that's the goal, that's the aim anyway. Right, I'm gonna make myself some breakfast. That was a very long introduction. I'm making my smoothie and I remembered I have the wild nutrition protein powder to try so let's give this a go this is the organic protein and superfood powder does it say how much to use three heaped teaspoons that's about a tablespoon hmm. this has mushrooms b12 and super greens and then i'm also going to get out these supplements we have got ashwagandha KSM 66 Ashwagandha Plus. We've got vitamin B12 Plus, which I won't take because I'm having the protein powder, which has the B12 in it. And then we've got the Iron Plus, which I also won't take because I'm not, it's not my time of the month. And she suggested to take this during my time of the month. But let's take a minute for how aesthetic these supplements are because normally supplement containers are plastic and horrible and these are glass and 100% I'm keeping these because they're like apothecary glasses. You could use these afterwards for spices and label them, just anything. They're just so pretty, 100% I'm keeping these. So let's take my ashwagandha and see over the next month or so if it affects me. 
I also have this one from Veg Vegetology Vologen. So this is collagen, but vegan collagen, because obviously collagen is usually animal based. And as you get older, I think your collagen production lowers. Um, I haven't done a huge heap of research into collagen and whether actually taking it makes a difference. But let me know if you know more. Um, this is free from gluten, sugar, wheat, and dairy. And this is good for hair, skin, nails, and joints. So I will take that one. My ashwagandha. And then I haven't taken this in a while, but this is the magnesium uh, from Innate. I get this on iHerb and it's magnesium, malate, citrate, and glycinate. And it says to take two capsules daily with food and beverage. And this is good for your sleep. And I also think for periods or mood regulation, watch this space. I haven't taken it in a while. I used to take it all the time. Delicious. Good morning. I completely stopped vlogging <laughs> yesterday. I got a headache and I never have headaches. Um, I think it was just tiredness or something. I just got a migraine and I had to go to sleep and I had a nap and I closed the curtains and I'm feeling much better today. I just, I just think it was something as simple as that. Sometimes those things happen. Just been overdoing it recently and doing a lot. So uh, I took the afternoon off and now I'm refreshed today. I actually feel like so much better today and i've just been to the gym and now i'm going to drop some things off in the charity shop because we have done a bit of a clearing out recently you saw in the vlog and we've still got more clearing to do but the one thing i've learned is to not let things pile up because if you are decluttering or doing a spring clean and you're out and about just pop them in the car so that when you're out you can take them to the charity shop or donate them where you're donating them um alex and i always put our things in the car and they do end up staying in the car for a while so i'm forcing myself to just do it on the way home it takes an extra five minutes and fingers crossed this charity shop is taking donations because i think sometimes it's not because it's a bit overwhelmed and if it's not then it doesn't really matter i can just go somewhere else another day um but yes we're off to the charity shop with all my bits. These are the two bags in question. I need to check what's in them first. I always get paranoid. Things have been donated and I resisted the temptation to buy anything, but yay, what a successful little thing. If that isn't a lesson, oh my gosh, this lighting, it's so sunny. What a weird, what a weird thing that it's actually sunny enough that I'm complaining about it. Um, if that's not a lesson in if you have something to do just do it now. One of my issues is I always leave things to the last minute or I'll procrastinate on them. A phrase I've mentioned to you before on here is don't think just do because the amount of times I think oh yes I'll do that later and now I'm just going no I'll just do it now unless I've got an appointment unless I have to be somewhere unless there's something urgent happening I can just do it now because the vast majority of the time it takes five minutes and that is an example because um, I really struggle with that and uh, that is, I'm gonna remember this, I'm gonna remember this. <laughs> We're all out of new, aren't we? All out of new. Careful, I'll leave that in. Don't judge me. What? Don't judge me. As long as it's not going to fall, as long as it is. It's fine, leave it. Balance and just checking, because if that falls over, that's a lot of money down the drain, okay? I didn't tell you the other day I dropped the camera on the patio. Sainsbury's just arrived. This week we didn't have time to go to the food shop, so we very quickly did a Sainsbury's delivery. I mostly do Riverford and go to my natural shop, natural store, um, and I really try and do that so that I'm supporting organic local farmers and local shops, all my green grocers, that kind of thing. But sometimes you have a week where you're just like, I haven't had the time and you need to just do a supermarket delivery. And Sainsbury's do have quite a lot of organic stuff, which is good. The only thing is there is a lot of plastic. 
Um, and also, can you let me know if you enjoy me sharing my food shops? Because I'm tending to do them in every weekly vlog at the minute. But I'm also aware that maybe, maybe you're not interested. Maybe you are, maybe some of you are. And I imagine probably I'm gonna have half and half. But please do let me know. And maybe if you see a comment, so the first person who's like commented to saying that they do like it, thumbs it up. And if you see someone who says that they don't like it, thumbs that up if you agree, so that I can kind of have a bit of a poll of whether you like it or whether you don't. Because if it's like overwhelmingly, people are just like, I'm not that interested in your food shop, um, I will probably not bother doing it anymore. But if you, if it's overwhelmingly, yes, I'm curious, then I will keep doing it. It's just that I feel like, is it that interesting? Is it not just the same thing every week? So let me know. Um, we ran out of olive oil, so I got some olive oil. Got loads of mushrooms after listening to my mushroom podcast. I um, was just back to back listening to the Zoe podcast, the Zoe Science and Nutrition podcast. I really rate that podcast because um, they always invite scientists in and the sort of leading research, so it doesn't feel like it's biased or that there's kind of some kind of underlying message that could be a bit misconstrued, which some podcasts, not gonna name any names, but there are lots of podcasts out there at the minute that are spouting nonsense and sharing a lot of misinformation. Even like the same podcast from episode to episode, they have people on who are just sharing very conflicting um, information or opinions. Uh, so I do like the fact that Zoe Science and Nutrition is very balanced and they have scientists and the, the general message is very clear across each podcast. So highly recommend that. And um, I, they had all these like short little uh, snippets where it was maybe like 10 or 15 minutes where they went through different diets and they were really interesting, but they also had a whole episode on mushrooms. So I will recommend that so much, or fungi. And it just inspired me, because you know how much I love mushrooms, but I got loads for this food shop. So we've got two shiitake, some organic white mushrooms and chestnut mushrooms. And if you want the kind of um, TLDR of that podcast when it comes to eating mushrooms, it's to eat as many mushrooms as you can in lots of variety. So obviously supplements are good, but there's nothing better than the actual thing. So eat different kinds of mushrooms, especially the speciality ones. Sainsbury's doesn't really have any, but if you're in um, you know, a food market or if you can get access to things like lion's mane or oyster mushrooms or enoki mushrooms or porcini mushrooms or dried mushrooms, then the more variety, the better. Got lots of salad, because I was gonna make a salad for me and Alex. We've got watercress, baby leaf and Little gem, got some, oh, these don't look very happy, but past their best spring onions. That's the only issue with the ordering online. Got a block of tofu, stocked up on flour for Alex and his bread. These are my favorite snacks ever. The deliciously Ella salted chocolate dipped um, almonds. Oh, they are, I could eat bags and bags of these. I have them for pudding, they're just so yummy, or just in the day. These are also delicious, these Calo organic uh, Belgian dark chocolates. We've got some avocados, hummus. I need to get Alex to make his own hummus, but he just loves the supermarket stuff. He, make, he says it's just, he prefers the taste of the one from the supermarket, which I don't get. I don't actually have hummus that much. That's more for him. I do like hummus, but I never end up having it. I don't know why, there's no reason why. Some chickpeas. Alex got some Trek bars, millionaire shortbread, actually. I'm kind of jealous and I kind of want one of these because that sounds utterly delicious. Yummy. Stocked up on some nutritional yeast. Rigatoni. Udon noodles, we're gonna make a miso soup with some pak choy as well. Some cherry tomatoes. Peppers, some for the salad, some for fajitas. We're gonna have fajitas on Friday. Very annoying, the amount of plastic. Um, and then I got these flatbreads because I've been listening to the Zoe Science Nutrition Podcast. I'm trying to, I've mentioned this loads of times and listening to ultra processed people. I'm trying to go back to a bit more of how I used to eat when I first started this channel. Not being restrictive at all because uh, I love to eat lots of fun foods and I always encourage that. Do not restrict yourself in any way. Enjoy all the food because food is to be enjoyed but I'm just being more mindful of the food that I'm eating, kind of going for like an 80-20 approach when it comes to processed foods and listening to my body too, because there have been a couple occasions recently where I've had ultra processed food and then the next day I've actually felt quite groggy and I've just been more aware of it and thought, hmm, is that because of this? Or 
uh, connecting the dots a bit more so that I am paying attention to what makes me feel good. And then that's a really nice motivation rather than this sort of restrictive idea of like, oh, I have to cut things out. You don't, you can eat whatever you want, but it's being mindful, I guess, of the food that you put on your plate and the balance of food and seeing the different options. So for example, I usually would just get the normal tortillas, but I looked at the ingredients and I was like, hmm, I wonder if there's a tortilla wrap or something similar that has um, whole ingredients. And these ones did. So these are the Crosta and Malika whole, Moika, whole blend organic piadina flatbreads. Obviously they're not tortillas, they're flatbreads, but they'll do the job for the heaters and I won't notice the difference too much. And Alex needs to learn how we need to make our own. It won't be hard, I'm sure. But yeah, it's just things like that, which don't actually make any difference to me when I'm eating it, but it's just being mindful of like what's in there. But also just to caveat that, if you are someone who's got any issues with eating disorders or disordered eating, Disregard everything I just said because you should not be looking at labels or paying attention to foods or what you're eating. Um, you should be focusing on getting better, speaking with a healthcare professional, speaking with your fr friends and family and getting well and um, recovering in your head before what you can recover in your body. Because um, any health things that you do, like eating whole foods or whatever, will never ever benefit you if you don't target or that you don't... Um, I guess improve whatever's going on with you in your mind and whatever issues you're going through because that's going to be more damaging than any healthy food will be good for you does that make any that's a really bad way of putting it but you hear what i'm saying there's really no point in focusing on your health when it comes to food if your health and your mind is not well so it's much more beneficial if, if you have health anxiety even or if you if you're coming from a point of view of being afraid of gaining weight or looking a certain way the most important thing you can do is focus on your mental health and get better, seek a therapist, speak to your friends and family um, and undo that relationship with food before thinking about what you're eating because it will never work. I've been there, trust me, I've been there. So the only reason I'm able to now think, hmm, maybe I should be a bit more balanced with um, or thinking about some things on what's on labels is because I've healed my relationship with food and I have a very balanced approach now. I don't have anything off limits. I eat whatever I want. I can have chocolate, burgers, crisps, whatever. And I can have nice organic vegetables, but it's more what I want and what I enjoy and what makes me feel good. And that's taken years. So um, don't take what influencers say or what a video on the internet just pops up and says that you should eat or sharing a mentality, even listening to podcasts like the Zoe Science and Nutrition podcast. Those ha can be disregarded basically if you have any sort of issues when it comes to food or disordered eating habits because there's literally no point unless you get well in your mind and I always advocate for that. I'm never going to be someone who's going to tell you what to eat or trigger you by saying that this is this is how it should be because um, your mental well-being will have more of an impact than anything else and that should always come first. So yeah, I get a bit uncomfortable when I like share health things that I'm going through that matter to me and when I'm listening to my own body and what, what makes me feel good and makes me happy because I never want to like trigger anyone or tell anyone what they should be doing. So if your food shop looks totally different to this and um, you are trying to heal your relationship with food and have no kind of limits and stuff, then just ignore me <laughs> essentially and do what makes you feel happy. Anyway, we got some sauerkraut and some kimchi, fermented food delicious and very good for your gut. And then some linguine, cause I'm gonna get some more wild garlic and make some more pesto. And then we've got some crisps. These are the Max Punchy Paprika Sip Pack. Alex added these, but I'm definitely gonna have some cause they are delicious. Paprika crisps. So that's my food shop. I really want to make a cake. I was saying this to my sister yesterday. I'm like, I just wanna make a cake. I don't know if it will happen in this video, maybe the next video, but I really want fancy a cake because it's spring and I just, you know, just like the middle of the afternoon, you just want to come in and have a slice of cake with a cup of tea. Like I want a, a banana bread or a lemon cake or something. Maybe I could make a lemon cake. Watch this space. I might get motivated later on to do that, but I'm going to put all this feed away now. Alexa, play Ariana Grande. Right 
I have been waiting to do this for so long because here in the UK the weather has been rain, rain, more rain and more rain. So I have not been able to paint the outside of the office since you saw us do it. It's a beautiful sunny day so I've done whatever computer work I need to do that's urgent and now I'm going to paint the outside. So thank you for all your feedback on the colour of the door. We've got an off-white paint that we're going to paint the doors and I also need to paint the wood. I fancy doing the doors though because I feel like that will look so good and it will really motivate me. Um, I always like to do the most like high reward thing first to get me in the mood and then we may go up here on a ladder and paint that and then round the front there's also the wood where it's clad to paint too and potentially also the gate but I'm not sure when I'll be able to do that but very first thing is these doors which we managed to fix this door's broken and we fixed it we didn't have to get a carpenter we did it ourselves I'm very happy with that so I'm gonna get the paint but first actually I need to clean it because there is so much like damp and insects and gross stuff that just gets in windows and doors so I'll give it a good old clean I'm gonna get a big bucket with soapy water and um just scrub everything down before painting and then we need to sand I forgot about that that's okay just like light sand <laughs> I just popped into the office because it's very windy out there and it is presenting a little bit of a challenge because obviously we're painting patio doors that open and we don't have a hook yet to stop it from like flying open and obviously I'm painting like the inside and the outside and it's quite cold so um but I, do, I need to get stuff done today because it's going to be raining the rest of the week and I just want it done because we've been waiting to do it for so long. I'm going to go around the side and do the windows. Alex has been sanding the wood and I just want to at least get a coat on all the windows and then we can attempt in gaps maybe between <laughs> rain, rain showers. But yeah, I, I really think that the white is going to look really fresh and lovely against the blue. And we've got the builder coming on Wednesday, our builder Matt to have a look at the gutters and quote us for that so we can get the gutters fixed and we're gonna go for black aluminium gutters like we will eventually do with the house as well and we're also gonna get him to quote us for that because we did get it quoted last year but then other things happened and we sort of took a break from renovating and stuff but in terms of like maintenance for the house we do need wooden fascias, um, new guttering and also to repoint a section of our wall because 
it's causing damp problems essentially you need nice guttering that works our guttering is broken in lots of places so it's spilling water down the walls and also the fascias aren't um, some of them are need replacing and also we need to paint and just like fix it so that there's not any sort of water getting into the uh, roof you just need to look after it essentially because then the the wood rots which then probably makes the stone wet it's just not not ideal and if we get scaffolding put up we can then paint the house so I don't know when that will happen. It's budget basically determined by how much money we have and how much it's gonna cost because those kinds of jobs are expensive and we only run a little business here. Um, you know, these things cost a lot of money. Renovations cost a lot of money. So we have to basically make a plan. But if he gives us a quote, we can make a plan and see how that pans out. And um, at least the office guttering we can get done because that won't be very expensive because it's just a small, annex and we don't need um scaffolds for that so yeah um i'm gonna go back outside i might have to put a coat on because it's really cold but i don't have a coat that i can get i can get paint on we'll see i'll i'll go look by the way i'm loving it in here with the um desks i don't think i ever like properly showed you it kind of like from this view ignore like all of the pillows being over, all over the place i think we should get some new pillows actually in here for just just for some variety. I don't love how they match. I want some like patterned ones. I think when I decorated this room, I was still in my era of uh, muted kind of neutrals, which I do like, but it looks a bit matchy matchy to me now. And I'm way more into color now. So I think that it could do in here with some, maybe some colorful paintings. I do love these paintings, but I think maybe some more colorful ones. And honestly, probably just some like patterned bright, cushions that are, have a bit more variety in them maybe a picture on this wall but I kind of like like this area almost more than here because it all looks a bit washed out I'm just so much more into color now and I think because the walls are the same color as the sofa are the same color as some of the cushions basically these gray cushions these kind of beige cushions need to go and we need to get some colorful ones but I just think it looks really cozy in here and I've been really enjoying working in here too it's very um very nice and very cozy. So yeah, massive success moving everything in. We also have our laundry out on the line. Oh no, it's raining. What? No. Okay, I'm gonna have to take probably another five minutes. It seems like it's just a shower because the sky is blue, but it is raining. Eee. The sun has come back out so I can do this window now. <laughs> But the first job is to, oh, I need to open it from the inside, but I need to clean it and I know it's going to be disgusting. <laughs> feeling ultra glam covered in paint I feel disgusting <laughs> the kitchen is a mess because all of the shit from the office is on our table and like the spring cleaning we've done has just ended up at this side of the kitchen I've been trying to hide it but it's very visible um basically when we moved everything out we wanted to make sure that we were selling things being organized spring cleaning and then we'll put it back properly the kitchen is a mess because today I just wanted to get the painting done and not worry about cleaning up so I'm gonna make dinner and I'll show you my dinner I'm gonna make my 10 minute mac and cheese which we have pretty much every single week because it's 10 minutes and it's delicious and it's a comfort food and I'm tired so it's in my cookbook make it vegan but I'll show you how I make it because I've been making it pretty much every week or fortnight since like 2016 and it's 10 out of 10. So I've got all of my main ingredients out 
The key ingredients are cashews, that's what makes the pasta really creamy. And if you want to get into vegan cooking, just always be stocked up on cashews because it's the best base for creamy sauces. And they're so good for you, of course. And also nutritional yeast. We actually started to buy this in bulk now from Whole Fo buy Whole Foods online because we get through so much nutritional yeast. Not only is it something that you can add to your food to make it go cheesy, but it's also got B12 in it, so it's fortified, which obviously if you're vegan, B12 is an important supplement to take. And you can get it from things like nutritional yeast and Marmite or a supplement. But nutritional yeast adds that really creamy, um, cheesy flavor. We've then basically just got a load of um, flavors. So lemon, we've got mustard powder, or you can use actual mustard, corn flour, and then lots of spices. And this is why I made this vegan mac and cheese recipe because it does only take 10 minutes. It has ingredients that I always have in the cupboard, so I don't need to have a specific thing in the fridge or the cupboard to make it. So I know that there are lots of really good recipes where you have to make it from things like carrots or butternut squash, which is obviously really healthy and delicious, but sometimes you don't have those ingredients. And this is one that we just, we always have nutritional yeast. We always have cashews and we always have these spices because of the kind of staples I always have stocked. So you'll need garlic powder and onion powder. And again, you could use actual garlic and actual onion if you wanted to. I would say probably like a clove of garlic and maybe like a quarter of an onion. You don't want to go too mad on the onion. And I'd also be tempted to cook the onion and garlic because I'd worry about it being a bit overpowering. In fact, scratch that. Just get yourself some onion and garlic powder. It saves the faff. And then a little bit of paprika, turmeric and um, chilli if you fancy a little bit of kick. I quite like it with a bit of chilli. Makes it kind of the flavors come out, but you don't have to have that. And that's basically it. Also, also um, some non-dairy milk. Any non-dairy milk works as long as it's not sweetened. My favorites are oat milk or soy milk, or you could go for cashew milk because that would match the cashews really well. Just something that's creamy. I wouldn't recommend almond milk because it's a lot more watery. I don't find it as creamy. So um, those are basically all the ingredients. And all you have to do is blend them all up in a blender and then pour them over some pasta. My favorite is rigatoni, and I often have it with um, some kind of vegetable. In fact, I'm a bit annoyed actually, because I didn't think of this. I normally have it with some like roasted broccoli. Oh my gosh, I'm so silly. I didn't even make any, I didn't order any broccoli, but I would usually have it with some roasted broccoli. That would be my favorite thing to have it with, or crispy kale. I might fry some mushrooms up and have, no, but I don't think that would go. I think that would ruin the vibe. But usually I would have it with some roasted vegetables, but today we don't have any. I don't know why I didn't think of that. So I'm just gonna blend it all in the blender. And the key also, because I know usually you wanna soak cashews. I have a very high speed Vitamix and the key basically is just to keep blending it for a really long time. If you only blend it for a short space of time, it won't go smooth and you'll still have little bits of cashews. My memory card ran out. <laughs> But yeah, you want to blend it until it's completely smooth and you'll be able to tell if you just um, put a spoon in there and you can see the texture of it. If there's any bits, keep blending. But if you don't have a high speed blender, then soak your cashews in water overnight or in hot boiling water for an hour because that will help them to blend and be soft. And don't, preferably don't use a food processor because food processors don't really blend uh, completely smooth. They're better for like dips and sauces. Let's chuck it all in. This is not the dream. I don't know what is. You have to. 
to try it yourself. Every time, hits the spot every time. 